the spirits are bright and the action is going as strong as ever here as we are entering the third deadline of the session here in the Minnesota House of Representatives. Well, and I wrote an article yesterday from a press release that I had um, received about the bill, a bill that was passed to help families and working families. And I told everybody, I said, it's really hard to dig into. I've tried to kind of go and look at stuff. I don't know how you guys make sense of all the wording sometimes. And maybe someday you can break all that down. But it sounded a lot like it was going to deal with um, making it safer on the Internet. Um, bullying is something that, you know, it will still happen, but it'll be something that will help alleviate those AI algorithms um, from creating even more of a hassle. A lot of things went into it. Absolutely. This bill has been a long time in the making, and I was really proud to vote for it because I've got two daughters, right? I've got a daughter who was a junior at Apollo High School, and I know, I've know i seen firsthand through her experiences how damaging and how really excruciating the pain of bullying and harassment and just the pressure that kids have on them through social media. I mean, it's hard enough being a teenager at any time, right? But with all the things going on on social media, we owe it to our kids as a state to hold the social media companies accountable and make sure that they're not preying upon our children by allowing the algorithms to feed off of that bullying behavior and get more clicks and get more likes and all these things. No, no company should be benefiting off of bullying and harassment and pain in our children. So that's why I'm really glad that we were able to get this done and we need to continue to look for ways to make sure we're protecting children, whether it's physically in our schools or whether it's online. We want to make sure that Minnesota is a safe place for all of our children to thrive. So I encourage anybody that wants to kind of read through that themselves, you can go to WJON.com and find that article. And there's links that go back to the bill. You just might want to sit down with a cup of coffee. It might take you a while to highlight the things that are in there. So, But, Dan, I want to congratulate you. You won an award. It's the Friend of the Year Award for your legislative accomplishments in early childhood family education. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. It is one of my proudest accomplishments for my six years in the House of Representatives. I won the Friend of the Year Award from the Minnesota Association for Family and Early Education. And that's really the biggest motivation that led me to run for office in the first place, is making sure that we have a representative who knows what it's like to raise a family here in central Minnesota in this day and age. And in all the work that I do, I really try to bring the perspective of a dad, of someone who is is dealing with the, the, the challenges of parenting and having kids. You know, we just mentioned earlier with the, the online bullying on social media, right? That's something I've seen as a dad uh, is one example of the perspective I bring to this job as a parent. And I've really seen the importance of early childhood education and making sure that our kids, you know, when they're in those early years, they're just like these little sponges, right? They pick up on so much. And as a parent, you know, you think about all the education that we get, right? In high school, in college, you know, wherever your education is, we learn about algebra, we learn about geometry, we learn about science, but there aren't a lot of good resources out there to learn about how to be a parent, yeah. which is the most important job that you can have is being a parent. So that's why I've really dug into uh, early childhood family education. And these programs support children from birth to kindergarten. They support their parents. They support expecting parents. And it's really about fostering those skills, you know, learning how to be a supportive parent, learning how to best manage the challenges that come with being a parent, with b children, uh, that's really important. And we can have the best schools in the world, we can have the best teachers in the world, but if the family isn't supported at home, none of that's gonna matter. So that's why I was really, really proud to receive that recognition. And I wanna continue to put forward legislation that supports children, supports families. Again, if things aren't right at home, things aren't gonna be right anywhere else. We've got to support parents and kids. Right.
I agree. All right, let's talk about uh, what we call, it's not really the Taylor Swift bill, but we're calling it the Taylor Swift HF 1989 bill. It passed. That's right. We we did pass the, uh, yes, what is uh, tongue-in-cheek known as the Taylor Swift bill. And I was really glad to get that over the finish line in the House of Representatives. Uh, as I, I know that you've heard from some of your listeners and readers I, all of a sudden, my email box got blown up. I heard from so many constituents who experienced a frustrating fiasco when they were attempting to buy tickets for Taylor Swift's concert in Minneapolis. And I know there are a lot of issues that we deal with here at the Capitol that are very serious, um, but it is important that we're looking out for consumers. You might think, oh, Taylor Swift, you know, that's not a serious thing. Well, consumer protections are very serious, and we want to make sure that we are not letting these ticket companies get away with bad faith practices. So it's what we're calling what we're calling the Taylor Swift bill is actually called the Ticket Transparency Act, and it requires fair, transparent ticket pricing for events, including clear, concise disclosure of all aspects of the price of a ticket and other important protections for consumers because there are a lot of people that, you know, you get a special code, you wait, you get in, you select your tickets, and there's that little ticking clock that says, oh, if you don't do this within three minutes, you're going to lose your spot, you're going to lose your ticket. So you go all the way through, and then boom, at the end, your ticket is way more expensive than what you had initially bought for. And then that clock is ticking. You know, there's all these things to put pressure Mm -hmm. on consumers and get them to pay these exorbitant fees and we're saying no more of that. We're going to be clear. We're going to be concise. We're not going to have these gimmicks that ratchet up the pressure. And at the end of the day, you know, arts and sports are important parts of our lives. And, you know, the memories that we create with our friends, with our family members at these events are precious. And we want to make sure that consumers have a fair opportunity to go and experience those events without uh, unfair ticket pricing. So how long do you think it will take before something goes into effect and that we'll actually notice that it feels different? Yeah, the bill goes into effect on January 1st of 2025. So uh, we've got some time for the Department of Commerce to, you know, get everything in line. We have time for the ticket companies to get their act in line, right, to make the changes that they need to make. Yeah. Um, Yeah, but it'll be in effect uh, on January 1st, 2025. And something else I want to talk about is there are several um, practices by fraudsters and scalpers that are really problematic and common on the secondary market. So we're cracking down on that. For example, ticket resellers can't sell more than one copy of the same ticket to an event. They can't employ people to wait in line to purchase the ticket for the purpose of reselling it. Uh, They can't resell the ticket before it's even been made available to the public. They can't disguise the identity of the purchasers to purchase an excessive number of tickets for resale. Those are just a few of the examples that we're seeing happen that, again, drive up, skyrocket the price of tickets and make it unfair. We just want regular Minnesotans to be able to go on, have a fair opportunity to buy a ticket to the event at a fair price That's what we're going for here. Yeah, totally makes sense. I'm excited to see the change. We just have to wait a little while because it takes a while to make those changes. And I'm sure if they don't make the changes by the deadline, there'll be consequences. Well, absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, that's in our statutes. That will be in our statutes. And, yep, there are severe consequences from fees to licensing, you know, all kinds of things that will happen if, these companies and these fraudsters and scalpers don't comply with the law. And again, it's about protecting consumers and making sure that people have a fair opportunity to go to these events at a fair price. That'll be going into effect January 1st, 2025. Okay. Awesome. Let's talk about this, changing the topic just a little bit. Um, There's a bill that you co-authored and it's to replace the statue of Henry Rice with Hubert Humphrey at the U.S. Capitol. Can you tell me the story behind that and what's going on with it? Absolutely. So this is about how we as the state of Minnesota present ourselves 
to the rest of the nation and really to the rest of the world. Uh, at the at the U.S. Capitol, there is a big, beautiful hall known as the uh, National Statutory Hall, and individual states are able to donate uh, statues of two prominent citizens who are notable to their history. And right now, we have uh, one of our people who has a statue. His name is Henry Mauer Rice. And I'll be honest with you, I did not know who Mr. Rice was. Um, that st his statue was put in back in uh, 1916. And, um, you know, unfortunately, he has, he was a uh, delegate. And it, it, a good thing that he did, he was one of the people who helped facilitate Minnesota statehood. Um, Rice County is named after him. That's nice, but he has a very problematic history of uh, taking advantage of Native Americans and indigenous populations here in the state of Minnesota. And that is really problematic. And at the end of the day, you know, a lot of history has passed since 1916. And we are not, you know, not trying to rewrite history or anything like that. It's just taking a look at, uh, you know, who really represents the best of our state in our civic history. So that's why we put forward this bill to have Hubert Humphrey be represent our state in statutory hall in the U.S. Capitol. And of course, he's known for his dedicated work on civil rights, social welfare, public health, fair employment. He was a senator. He served as vice president. Uh, he did so much also for farmers. Uh, you hear all about the civil rights stuff, but he served on the agriculture committee and was a very strong champion for Minnesota's farmers. Um, and so we are putting forward this bill. It has to go through the legislature. That's how these processes work. And we want to be very fair to the statue of Mr. Rice. And uh, we think that the best spot for that would be, you know, the Rice County Historical Society. We want to honor that history and, and make sure that continues to be known. But again, I, you know, I, I'll be honest, I'd never heard of Henry Maurer Rice. Uh, I don't know that a lot of Minnesotans have, I think it's time that we update our statue and, you know, put forward a, a true, true national leader for our state to represent us in statutory hall in Congress. So how long do you think uh, it will be before you, um, know about that. I mean, you presented it, it. It has not passed yet, correct? That's right. We just heard it in the rules committee today. And I'm a, I'm a co-author on the bill. Our majority leader long is actually the chief author of this bill. Um, but he, you know, it, it will have to kind of go through a process out in Congress. So, you know, it could take a few months. Um, and of course you have to arrange the logistics to get the statue out there and bring the statue back. Um, so yeah, it could, it could be a few months, you know, a few months to a year, but in, in somebody actually from our committee had been out to Washington DC recently, and they noted that the statue of Henry Maurer Rice was way kind of in the back corner <laughs> where uh. there were some other, you know, statues where nobody really knew who they were or why they were necessarily there. Yeah. You know, whereas they noted that the statue of Dwight Eisenhower from Kansas you know, it was featured front and center. And that's really how we want our state represented front for the center. rest of the country and the world. So again, that's, you know, there's a lot of important things going on. This is, you know, by no means, uh, you know, a major thing that uh, that's taking up a bunch of our time, but I thought it's kind of interesting to you and your listeners. And again, it's, you know, people from all over the world are at the U S Capitol and we want to make sure our state is well represented by, a modern national leader who has had an impact on our state, on our nation in recent times. That's yeah. why we've been putting this bill forward. All right. We just got a couple minutes left. Now, the Donuts with Dan has not happened yet. That's coming up next week? That's right. Okay. I'm doing a Donuts with Dan on Monday at 4 o'clock at the Carpenters Hall in St. Augusta. And would love for as many of your listeners as possible to come and Join me for donuts and share what's on your mind, share your feedback. Let me know how I can best serve you and your family. And if people can't make it, they can always contact you and reach out right to you at the Capitol. Your, what, your email address? 
That's right. You know, you're my boss and I work for you. So rep.dan.wolgamont at house.mn.gov. Like I said, stay in touch. Let me know what's on your mind. Let me know what you'd like me to be working on. All right. And Dan, will you be joining us again next week? I certainly will. Wouldn't miss it for the world. All right, Dan. Appreciate it. It's State Representative Dan Wolgamont joining us for From the Capitol today. So if you have questions, reach out to him through his email. If you've got something you want to tell him, facts you want to give him, um, he definitely listens. He he travels to our community and talks to people about things that are happening. So uh, let him know what's important. It's the only way we can get things done around here.